purchase considerations for a Chromebook in 2024. In this video, we're going to cover the changing requirements of Chromebooks to meet AI expectations, why you should only buy a Chromebook Plus, and the confusion big box stores have in labeling Chromebooks. I'm Ron Brown from Tech for Senior, and today we're going to talk about purchase considerations for Chromebooks in 2024. Last year, I made a video about purchasing Chromebooks in 2023. I'll put the link in the description, and I would encourage you to watch that video before watching this one. Today, we're going to focus on the three issues I discussed at the beginning. Those issues are very important to consider before purchasing your new Chromebook. I have been a passionate user of Chromebooks since they left the school system many years ago. I currently own a Pixelbook and had the opportunity for three years to make a series called Learning Chromebooks with my partner in Tech for Senior, Huey Popluck. I'll put the link below in the description. I think there's a lot of good information that you might want to watch if you're a new Chromebook user. But sadly, my Pixelbook is coming to the end of its days and I'm looking for a replacement. There are certainly a lot of choices on the market today. And to help you with that, I'm going to refer you to a website called Chrome Unboxed, where Robbie Payne reviews most of the new Chromebooks that are released. These are very good reviews and he makes some excellent suggestions. If you're new to Chromebooks and you're just wondering what to purchase, it's an excellent resource for you. Now, currently in 2024, Chromebooks with their sophistication have become a replacement for your desktop PC. In looking at the various choices you have, it is important to set a budget. And I believe the budget should be set at somewhere between three and $500 US. More to come on that in a moment. I would like you to be very careful about purchasing refurbished machines that you'll see on Amazon. Chromebooks originated in the school district and still remain a very popular choice. The school districts will usually lease these machines from leasing companies who build them with specific goals for the uh, age limit that they will be used for. The problem with this is, is when the leasing uh, time is over, these machines are put up for sale and often refurbished and sold uh, either on eBay or Amazon. These machines often have limited functionality with either a few external ports or low res screens. These will not be a suitable mach machine to be an alternative for a PC. So be very careful with that. Yes, you can buy a $99 Chromebook, but I don't think you'd be very happy with it. Now, I wanted to take a moment to discuss the future of Chromebooks, which I feel at this current in time is uncertain. In my goal today, I want to give you the best advice for purchasing a Chromebook that is going to last for a number of years. Let me explain what's happening with the changes in the computer industry. Now, you've heard of something called AI or artificial intelligence. This has changed the way uh, we use computers and certainly the way they're made. And with the new Qualcomm Snapdragon chip that is in the new PCs, this is offering a whole other level of support for artificial intelligence. Now, in order for Chromebooks to stay relevant, they too are going to have to change quickly. Yes, I understand you can use artificial intelligence, Gemini, ChatGPT, or Copilot on your Chromebook. But that's because the, this software is run in the cloud, cloud computing. But as we move forward, it's going to be run locally on your hard drive. So will Chromebooks be able to make the change quickly to be stay relevant? And that really is the question. I suspect Google already has some thoughts behind that because of some changes they've made over the past year. And let me discuss these changes now because this is really crucial on your purchase consideration. So in September of last year, I made a video called Purchase Considerations of a Chromebook in 2023. And one week before I made the video, Google announced the designation of a new class of Chromebooks 
called Chromebook Pluses. And I'm going to put the specifications uh, on the screen here, but these are the specifications a Chromebook must have before they're designated as a Chromebook Plus. I suspect the reason for this was because they wanted to make it easy if you wanted to buy a Chromebook that was truly a PC replacement, you wanted specific standards. And as long as you bought a Chromebook Plus, then you would have those standards and it would be an easy way for you, the consumer, to be able to identify those machines. I initially thought this was a great idea and supported it until Robbie Payne from Chrome Unboxed started reviewing some of the OS updates in Chromebooks. And the comments that he was making are like, this is an AI feature only available on Chromebook Pluses. So now we have two standards in the Chromebook world. One is a regular Chromebook and the other is a Chromebook Plus. And as we move forward in the next year, there will be many updates, usually monthly updates, in the operating system. And some features will be available to those who have Chromebook Pluses and some features will not. So this is why I feel that it's very important when you're considering a purchase of a Chromebook that you choose the Chromebook Plus, which would put it as a higher end on our budget scale. But in order to stay relevant, I think this is going to be very important to do. So when is a Chromebook Plus not a Chromebook Plus? <laughs> a little riddle for you. This is so important in your purchasing of a Chromebook Plus. Let me explain the answer to that riddle. So my Chromebook is a Pixel Book, and sadly, after seven years of service, the battery is non-replaceable and starting to give out. And so I'm looking for a replacement, and I have chosen the Acer Spin 714. This past few months, uh, Acer has brought out a Spin 714 Chromebook Plus. Yes, exactly what I want. The Acer Spin 714 has been a top pick on Chromebooks for four or five years straight with Chrome Unboxed and Robbie Payne's reviews. It is a solid Chromebook and an excellent replacement for my existing Pixelbook. I do want the new version, which is the Chromebook Plus, for the reasons that I've just described. Unfortunately, it's not available in Canada. It is available in the US, but not in Canada. I can't find it on Amazon. Uh, it's not available on any of the sites I looked at. And I even phoned Best Buy in Seattle and they will not ship it out of country. So it's not available in Canada, but to my surprise, Costco on their online website in Canada has a Acer Spin Chromebook Plus. I was ecstatic about this and so pleased that I would now be able to get my computer. Now, Robbie Payne in this diagram here is explaining the difference between the old Acer Spin 714 and the new Acer Spin 714 Chromebook Plus. These are two distinct different machines and the newer model, the one I want, indeed has a different chipset. Again, I'm trying to hedge my bets on what's going to happen with Chromebooks. So I want to make sure that I get the Chromebook Plus. So to my delight, as you'll see in this Costco ad, it says definitely a Chromebook Plus. I ordered it. I was excited, but I was skeptical because Costco usually doesn't get current models of machines. They're usually a little bit older. So when it arrived, despite having the clear label on the invoice that it was a Acer Spin 714 Chromebook Plus, it was not. The box did not say Chromebook Plus on the side and the Chromebook Plus designation wasn't on the machine. I phoned Acer and they ran the serial number and it was the old model. This was clearly mislabeled. Or was it? In this diagram, you'll see Google's site that lists Chromebook Plus designations to older models of Chromebooks. So if you have a Chromebook that is a year or two old and 
it meets the specifications of a Chromebook Plus, Google will designate it as a Chromebook Plus on this list. So if Google designates your machine as a Chromebook Plus because it meets the specifications, then it doesn't matter how old it is, you theoretically should get the updates from the O, you should be able to get the OS updates on a monthly and basis. That would include the AI ones. Well, we're not sure about that because the architectural of PCs had to change quite a bit to allow this to happen. And I suspect in Chromebooks that will be the same. So I feel Costco certainly mislabeled that and I'm sure glad of their return policy because it got returned the next day. So here's my advice to you. Make sure when you purchase a Chromebook Plus that it is definitely on the box stamped Chromebook Plus and get the uh, manufacturer to run the serial number and confirm that it is a Chromebook Plus when you get it. I think this will give you the best chance of getting a very modern machine that will last into the future depending on what happens with the future AI on Chromebooks. Now I'd like to talk about lacrosse. No, not, not the sport lacrosse, but project lacrosse. If you are interested to uh, know more about it, I'll, I'll put a video link down below as I made a video about lacrosse. So in a nutshell, lacrosse uh, is a project that uh, Google had for Chromebooks and it was to separate the Chrome operating system from the Chrome browser. As you are aware, the Chrome browser on a Chromebook is embedded into the operating system. And as Chrome, the Chrome operating system gets updated every month or so, then the Chrome browser will be updated at that time. But in actual fact, those of us who have PCs as well, note that the Chrome browser often is updated every week. They're very aggressive with the updates. So it is dissimilar and the version numbers never match the Chrome browser on a PC with that of the Chrome browser on a Chromebook. Google, so what happened was Google decided to separate the Chrome browser from the operating system. And you could turn on this as an experimental feature and it was called lacrosse. And that would put the Chrome browser is an app on the surface of your Chromebook, which would be different from the operating system. So they would update uh, at different times and the Chrome browser on the Chromebook would match that of the browser on a PC. It would be perfectly up to date. Now, for whatever reason, I have no idea, but they decided to kill the project. So lacrosse is dead and it's not going to be, the, it's not coming. It will, the Chrome browser will stay as part of the operating system. The reason I wanted to mention this to you is because you're wondering what happens if you've made the conversion. A lot of people watched my video. A lot of people uh, added that as an experimental feature. Now, uh, what will happen with version 128, it will all be turned back to the way it was. I'm not exactly sure what the menuing system will be, but what will happen is you'll do an update and it'll all go back to the way it was. The version, the current version, which uh, should this should happen is version 128. And that's the current version. But I notice on my Pixel book, I only have version 126. And I don't know if they're holding it back because I have um, lacrosse enabled on it. And it's gonna take a little time to work through the operating system, I don't know but uh, it, it should happen very quickly now and it will all be converted back and you don't have to do anything about it. And the last thing I wanted to remind you is if you have a Chromebook and are a lid closure like I am, I never turn mine off. When I'm finished with it, I just close the lid and I open it up the next day. What you need to understand is the Chrome operating system has two versions on your Chromebook. There's A and B. And of course your Chromebook runs on A, but the B version is the one that gets updated. How it changes from A to B is when you turn the power off to your Chromebook. When you close the lid, you simply put it to sleep. So if you are a lid closure like I am, not a problem. 
It's just at least once a month, make sure you power off your Chromebook and power it back on and the switch will occur. I'm Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Hopefully you're enjoying your Chromebook usage or if you're a new Chromebook user and you wanna purchase a Chromebook, I hope this video has been helpful. Remember to watch the video I made last year. It has a lot of detail on screen resolution, screen sizes, hard drives and stuff like that in it. So it's a, it's a great video to watch. And as I said, I'll put the link down below. Remember that like and subscribe. If you click that button for sure, we'll notify you when our next video comes out. Have a great day until we see you again. Stay safe.